What's up, guys? It's your boy Benny. This is the moment we have been waiting years for. The Joe Rogan and Donald Trump podcast has officially dropped and it is a three hour freewheeling banger. It is everything that we could have possibly hoped for and more. Joe Rogan delivers, Donald Trump delivers in peak form. And quite frankly, um, it's hard to really know where to begin because this sucker just goes everywhere. You can't get bigger and better than Joe Rogan and Donald Trump in the same room. So let's rock and roll. This episode, which we just got finished listening to, it is late into the evening, three hour episode. Man, they freaking let her rip here. Uh, this thing got, it, it just crossed the 1 million view threshold. It took two hours to cross the 1 million view threshold. This is what's publicly available on YouTube. It's probably far more than this in the back end uh, for, Joe, for Joe Rogan. Uh, but it started off on TikTok, actually. The first time we saw the two of these men together were on TikTok. Check this out. World. <laughs> Hello, world. We just wrapped up a great podcast. We had a good time. I think you'll find it very interesting and enjoy it. Very zen, very rad. Here we go. Uh, it started with Donald Trump saying he's not sure why the media is so obsessed with him. And Joe Rogan interrupts and says, well, I think I know. I always got more publicity than other people. And I didn't, it wasn't like I was trying. In fact, I don't know exactly why. Maybe you can tell me why. Oh, I could definitely I, tell you. You said a lot of wild shit. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he said a lot of wild shit. And then is. CNN, in their all their brilliance, by highlighting your wild shit made you much more popular yeah, yeah and they boosted you in the polls because people were tired of someone talking in this bullshit pre-prepared politician lingo perfect yes people are loving donald trump because he is authentic joe rogan who of course has cut his teeth as a comedian that's how he began his career talking about donald trump's incredible sense of comedic timing instincts like when you said to hillary you'd be in jail like that's great timing yeah but it's like that kind of stuff was unheard of as a politician like no one had done that and i think you know, it's funny you need at least the attitude of a comedian when you're doing this business this is a very yes. dangerous business first of all it's a very tough business being president is the most dangerous especially you I mean, oh, we, we, you summer. haven't even got to the election. There's been two assassination attempts. If there was a tax on, if Biden got shot in the ear, we would have never heard the end of it. But I think he's in good shape because it's only consequential presidents. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump going in saying it's consequential presidents who they really need to go after. This is the presidents who fight against the machine and who stand against the machine. Donald Trump stood up and let rogan see the scar on his ear speaking of assassination attempts we were gonna, i was uh he was, I, he was a nice once guy. they shot you i was like he's got to come in here it's all about timing it's all about the timing uh, timing i think our timing's perfect do you even have a scar on your ear you got anything on there i do what do we say so there? right over here oh, it's I, a tiny little they, mark it zicked right there yeah. It's, it healed up pretty fucking good. Well, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's little. It's not like uh, some of the wrestlers, uh, some of the UFC fighters. No, you didn't get cauliflower. Bit, no, no, no. It got. It was sort of like a top shot. Mm -hmm. The point of the bullet was Boy. a little of the ass. But you see, the the, the things take it off a little bit. But uh, it makes me a tougher guy. You know, the <laughs> fighters. It makes me a tougher guy. Joe Rogan, of course, knows what it uh, looks like to have somebody. Well get beat up pretty good and then come back and win Joe Rogan asking about, you know, why is all of this happening to you? Why do they hate you so much? Why is the machine turned against you? Because the machine used to love you. Now they're calling you Hitler. Trump's response. Perfect. President, if you look at the, the amount assassination of assassination attempts and, and yeah. attempts too, yeah. and attempts. No, it's a very dangerous position. I never thought of that, by the way, when I did it. I, you know, you don't, you don't tend to. Do you just assume because people think loved you on The Apprentice, they were going to love you as a well, president? I figured it would be so easy. You know, it was <laughs> well, very it probably would have been if the media didn't attack you the way they did. If they didn't conflate you with Hitler. I mean, even today, like, Kamala was talking about you and Hitler. You're, they're going to take what you said about Robert E. Lee. Oh, Donald oh, Trump wishes the South Robert won. E. That's yeah. right. He loves Robert they, E. Lee. They love to take things out of context and yeah. distort things. 
But well, they, they don't even have to take them out. They make them up entirely. Okay, they, they do make that them, too. But yeah. Speaking of being made up entirely, Donald Trump, let me tell you what, step in on a landmine here in all the best ways, calling the polls fake. You know I, how polls are done? I, I, oh, I'm going to get myself please. in trouble. But So I really don't believe too much in him. So well, 2016 taught a lot of people about the ineffective. Well, they were very ineffective because yeah. I thought I was doing well. I'd go to a place and I'd have 30, 40,000 people. Hillary would go. They have 500 people. And they tell me I'm going to lose. I said, why am I going to lose? I had 40,000 people. She had 200 people. But, you know, I have a theory. These pollsters, they charge you a lot of money, too. You know, they charge you half a million bucks to do some stupid poll. And they interview like 251 people. I don't think they interview them in many cases. I don't want to get myself in too much trouble. You think it's bullshit? I think they sit there, they make a deal, they get a half a million bucks, and they say, <laughs> Trump's leading 51 to 49, they announce it, and everybody says, oh. Donald Trump saying that Kamala's polls are fake, that his polls are real, and that he's winning by even more, even though Donald Trump is winning right now against Kamala. What does Donald Trump say about Kamala? <laughs> Can you imagine Kamala doing this show? She'd I be, could imagine her doing this show. She'd be laying to, on the floor. She was supposed to do it, and she might still do it, do it, and I hope she does. She's not going to I will it. talk to her like a human being. I would if try to have a conversation with her. she did this kind of an her. interview with you, I hope she does because it would be a mess. She'd be <laughs> laying on the floor comatose. She'd, you'd be saying, call in the medics. I think we'd have a fine conversation. <laughs> Speaking of other presidents, uh, other people who worked in an administration who are no longer with us, the JFK files. What does Trump have to say about them? Well, well, well. Things that I wanted to talk to you about is the JFK files. And one of the things that you said yeah. was that if they showed you what they showed me, this is your quote, you wouldn't want people to know it either. I opened them up partially. They called me. They said, sir, would rather have you not. After, and I did open them. But I was asked by some people not to open them. There's a Martin Luther King file, too, by the way, that they'd like to see. I don't know if you know, but there is that. But but JFK in particular. So they call me. A lot of good people call me. People that I, you know, that you would find reasonable people. And they asked me not to do it. So I said, well, we'll close it for another time. But... If I win, I'm going to open them up. I'm just going to open enough. Why time didn't you going. open it up the first time? Because what a lot was, of times what was the hesitation though? Uh, addresses people that are still living. There are people that are affected. Hard to hard to argue with that. There are people that are still affected. But Donald Trump saying that he's going to go full punk rock this next administration, full rebel, and this I think is just a beautiful, beautiful distillation by Joe Rogan of what's actually going on here. Joe Rogan saying that the Republican Party is actually the party of the rebels now. He's down 30 with young mm -hmm. people. I'm plus 30. And I'm on TikTok. I think young it's people, had a huge impact. Young people are rejecting a lot of this woke bullshit. Yeah, young people are. are tired of being yelled at and scolded. They're, they're tired of these people that they think are mentally ill telling them what the moral standards yeah, of society right. should be today. And people are upset. It's a big, there's a big difference now, but even in just a couple of years... I was shaking hands with people. They're young people. The rebels are Republicans now. They're like, you yeah, want to be a rebel? You want to be punk rock? Right. You want to, like, yeah. buck the system? You're yeah. a conservative now. That's the, that's how crazy. Kamala Harris also in Texas on the exact same night. Very interesting how um, nobody was watching, even though there was Beyonce and a 91-year-old Willie Nelson on stage. It was super creepy. Donald Trump uh, absolutely getting the best of this one. Um, Kamala Harris instead having to yell down protesters at her rally that got out of hand, looking just terrible here. <laughs> So it's perfect contrast, right? 
perfect contrast. We checked on uh, MSNBC and they were covering the Kamala Harris rally. And you'd be surprised to learn that there was a grand total of 1,000 people that have watched the rally. Meanwhile, at time of recording, there are over a million people, at least, probably twice this actually, that have seen the Joe Rogan and Donald Trump interview. So, you know what? Everything's a poll, right? That's a poll. Donald Trump showing exactly why he has the wit, the intelligence, the stamina, the strength, and the sharpness to be president again. And I think that this podcast, Donald Trump was already winning. I think Donald Trump's going to win in a landslide on election night after this podcast. Go watch the full thing, ladies and gentlemen. We just did some of the best best uh, three hours of our lives, truly. It's a, 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 an exciting moment true, uh, in the landscape of media, culture, and politics that I'll never forget. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya.